Hey, what's going on, guys? Mike Glover, Philcraft Survival. I'm here with special guest GBRS. That's Golf Bravo Romeo Sierra. Sierra. <laughs> TBI, man. I don't short term memory. <laughs> um, but GBRS is here, former Navy, uh, career Navy guys, both med retired. Uh, both of them spent time in development group. And they're here teaching me and transitioning from a Glock to a SIG, which Army guys use. We used to use. Glocks in special operations, uh, still using 19s, I believe, but now the entire army is going to M17 and M18, and these guys are experts at it because they used it in their Navy career, also familiar with Glocks, so they know the perfect transition. So I'm going to hand it over to DJ because DJ is going to give me, from scratch on a cold gun, um, blocks of instruction on the transition. And if you haven't listened to part one of this, it's the episode right before this, make sure you do that in advance. Thanks. Cool. Let's go. So we already talked about finding the trigger, trying to find the wall. Yeah. The differences between Glock and Sig. Yeah. Um, I feel uh, if we get in our normal stance, whatever yeah. your normal shooting position is, we yeah. start from a high ready. Yep. Um, and we drive that thing on our eye line to see where it lines up with you naturally. Okay. So if we drive it out the same way we do for a Glock, do you have to level it? Do you have to drop it? Are we getting front sight focus? Is everything in alignment? Yeah. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, so I have the three. 20x carry legion i've been practicing on so i could i see it on the a like in the center of the a yep. and i see that front sight in the rear of my vision blurry on the a it okay. seems to be aligning pretty good okay so a lot of guys that uh start out with glocks me especially i felt like i always had to drive it out and then level it to find it or i had to heal it to try to find it i feel the the sig oh. transition's pretty flat yeah it's if, flat. if we drive it out so Kind of thing we tell our students if we imagine in high school we used to shoot spitballs we just aim with our nose yeah i stare exactly where i want to go and if we start from a high red and i drive it into my eye line that's a poor grip we can see his thumbs in alignment the thumb is really the guide rod i'm pointing that thumb at exactly where i want to go and to me that is the defining moment if how fast i drive out that support thumb is my secondary aim device if nothing else happens where i point that thumb yeah if i'm in alignment that's where i'm going so when I drive it out and we're prepping that trigger, I'm really focusing on driving that thumb to the alignment. That does a lot of my work because we're inside, we're prepping for that 21 foot gunfight for inside yeah. of that CQB range is really what we focus on. Cause I feel like out of most scenarios, that's really what it comes down to, especially law enforcement or concealed carry. We're not getting 50 meter pistol gunfights in yeah. the middle of the street. It's not reality. Yeah. But for this, if we, if we lean forward on I'd say uh, not the instinctive shooting, but the universal approach that I, I'm staring at the threat, I'm staring at the target, whatever it's going to be, and now I'm going to just present the gun into my eye line, but I'm gonna focus on the trigger prep on the drive out. So any point from the high ready, once my finger touches the trigger to the drive out, I can break that shot because it's level the entire presentation. We're not doing a tomahawk chop, we're not bowling it into position. Got it. It's at the high ready. And we I'm drive it here. Oh, yep. okay. okay. As soon as that support hang meets, we drive it out. I mean, one of the points too that you definitely want to focus on as you're driving it out, you're bringing those sights up to your eye line, not bringing your head down. Yeah. So if you drive it out one more time, we, we talked about the back plate. <coughs> so just for the sake of the argument, if we take that and we superimpose it dead center of the target and we'd let the optics or we'd let the, the iron sights just go fuzzy and we just put that big broad right in the dead center of it. That's kind of the platform, the instinctive shooting, is I'm bringing it into my eye line, that spitball approach. I'm trying to make it something universal that I've done a million times. It's like throwing a baseball. There's no sight for it. You just know. So it's the same thing. Well, I just know, have to stare at it. What I've never noticed before is how significant this box is on the back of the SIG. And I, I never noticed that, but when you just told me to go look for that box, now, even though the, the target's in clear, refined focus, I see this big box in the background of my vision. Yeah. And it, it, I don't know if SIG did that on purpose as a point of reference, but it's a massive target and it and it's filling up that A zone right in the center of it. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. we mess around with it uh, with blocks. We take a white paint pen and circle uh, it on the back yeah. and that's how we do back plates. So we get out of a vehicle and we have to run something super fast. It's something just enough to be able to level it yeah. to get the back plate. So we're not winging out shots. We, we're accountable for every round that leaves that gun. Yeah. So we have to be able to train for my red dot gets knocked off. The battery is dead, whatever. 
I bet more people have been crushed by trying to find a red dot, trying to acquire a front sight, oh, yeah. than just trusting in your foundation, the stance, the grip, the head positioning, the trigger prep and reset, Yeah. and driving out and making it and one just, smooth pull. And, and, you're, and that, that whole paint marker thing on the back of the gun, you guys did that in the Navy? We did that in Navy for Glocks because we had to make a transition. And yeah. it was so weird because I'd shoot low, a lot of guys would shoot high, we couldn't find the right grip angle. So we sent, um, we sent our guns to Robar to try to give them a 1911 style. We'd shave them down, we'd do yeah. all kinds of stuff. And it was a hard transition for a lot yeah. of guys. We just weren't used to striker fire. We weren't used to the trigger pull. Yeah. And it was a learning curve. I mean, a lot of guys didn't want to make the move. It's like and, then, the, and then now it's like these platforms, the 320 that I'm shooting is, uh, I believe it's Max Michelle's custom gun, but it's like ergonomically perfect and balanced, yeah. which, which, which is something substantial uh, when you look at the, um, I know the barrels still and forged or, or still or hammered steel and the, uh, the grip module is aluminum. Yep. Is it aluminum? Yep. Is that right? Okay. Yep. So yeah. we, on the X5, it's tungsten infused. So tungsten infused, yep. It's super heavy. I like the heavy grip. To me, it makes the slide feel so much lighter. It makes yes. it feel like it's titanium. Yeah. It, it wants to run on rails, especially if we grab with a master grip, yeah. like a firm grip. We talk about the physical component and everything special up. The grip matters. Yeah. Know? Like how strong you are physically matters. Yeah. So we talked about the mindset between pulling that pistol out of the holster. Yeah. I'm not pulling out as a deterrent. Yeah. If that thing clears garment, I'm doing one thing with it. I'm shooting something with it. So if, if I go to get a purchase on this gun, by the time it breaks out to here, I've got 100% of my being wrapped around that gun. Yeah. And if I point it at you, you can't take it from me. Yeah. So we talk about the intent behind the grip and everything else. Yeah. Universal I never pull anything out unless it has 100% meat wrapped around the gun. I'm just saying, if I heard that right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So when, when I, what's interesting about this gun is I had a Glock when I was all Glock, because even in the army, when I shot competitively, I didn't want to transition into a different gun competitively because I wanted to use the work mindset. Um, I used a steel um, frame at one point, and I can't remember the name of the company. You guys could comment below in the, in the notes. You probably know it. I don't think they're around anymore, but it was a super heavy grip module for the Glock. But it, when you presented it, it was super balanced in the presentation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, even in dry practice, if you're not fully loaded up, you get that polymer light on the end or on the bottom and then heavy on top, it just feels funky yeah. in practicing presentation. But even this with no bullets in it, no mag in it, feels super balanced as I present the gun. We talked about it before, like when you drive out that gun, it should feel like if you have no experience whatsoever and you pick up a pistol, and you drive it out, it should feel like what you thought a pistol should feel like. As yeah. a child, yeah. watching people run around, bad guy movies, good guy movies, like when I grab a SIG, that's exactly what I thought a pistol would feel like. Yeah. Well, I grab some of these other foreign guns or whatever yeah. else. And like, what is this? What? Yeah, I don't even know how to shoot this damn thing. It yeah. Just, and we talked about, you're about to do something very uncomfortable with that firearm. Yeah. So why not give yourself every advantage? Like the texture of the grip, the optic, everything about that gun should yeah. be tailor-made for you because your life depends on it at this point. Yeah. If it comes out of the holster, it's, it matters. I love when guys are like, just suck it up, Mike. And I'm like, I'm not looking for tactical disadvantage. Yeah. I want tactical advantage. And if that means comfort and reliability or all these different things, yeah. I'm on board with that. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's like, why didn't you go into a gunfight solo? Yeah. Because I'm better off with all my friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we bring them. 100%. That's why we bring the helicopters. That's why we bring everything else. Yeah. Because it gives you the tactical advantage. Yeah. If you ain't Give cheating, yourself. you ain't trying. Exactly. All right, so first drill. What, so what are we doing? What's, so, what do you think? So first, we'll lock and load. Let's get five rounds. Okay. Just from the high ready, just feeling out the trigger, just feeling comfortable with it. Okay. And then we can kind of build into it. Um, we like a build up from a build drill. Yeah. Kind of work it, you know, six rounds at a three second part time, but okay. really it's it's feeling where that trigger break is yeah. every time and then being comfortable with it. So kind of like slow aim, one, For sure. two. Just to really feel the reset each shot yeah. to make sure you know that. Yeah. Because a lot of guys will do a countdown drill sometimes with Glocks. We drive it out one pound, two pound. Yeah. It's supposed to break it five pound trigger. Yeah. Like three, they're breaking it. You get to seven and they haven't even milked it yet. Like we have to figure out, we, we're accountable for that trigger pull. Got it. And the reset. Got it. Okay. All right, so I'm going hot, and just so you guys know, safety-wise, I don't I don't want to Baldwin anybody here. Um, I I want to make sure that we're always safe. Uh, he's uh, got hearing and eye protection, and out of frame of being in my line of fire. Just to put it out there for you guys who are thinking about starting YouTube channels or filming content, we're 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 practicing good habits here, good safety habits. All right, so lock and load.
Whoa, this is like the new girlfriend. Like, yeah, right? Wow. Yeah. I'm jealous, man. That thing's beautiful. Dude, it's, it, yeah, it's different. It's different. Okay. So out of the holster, just high? Yeah, just high, yep. ready. Like, okay. We're trying to take out everything. Just We want you to obsess over the trigger, yep. over the grip, over the recoil, and the reset. Yeah. And Cole, I'm prepping here, right? I'm going to prep here or prep on extension. I yeah. I would start prepping as you're coming out. Got it, got it. Prep on extension. Okay. All right, so five rounds, just one spot? Just uh, one shot at a time? Yeah, five rounds to really feel Five it. rounds total. Yep. On that one shot, though, once you take that first shot, slowly let it out and feel that initial reset. Okay, got it. I'll give you that comfortable. Makes sense. Okay. All right, ready? On you. Wow. Yeah, it's it feels super consistent yep. as I shoot, which is not familiar. Like I'm used to the binding, yeah. and like friction, and my brain goes work around that. But it's it's super clean. It, it feels crisp is the only word yeah. I can think of. I, I feel like a lot of my, it almost feels spongy. I'm trying to find the reset, and I'm feeling pressure. It wants to reset too yeah. far. Yeah, and that's why I think guys come all the way off they and not the yeah. Okay. So a lot of times we'll get on there with our support hand and we'll milk it for him. Yeah. We'll break the first shot, reset, reset, right to the wall. Okay. From there, that's where we reset to. Okay. Just make sure they're not doing it. All right. So same deal? Yep, same deal. Okay. How's that feel? Good. I'm, I'm actually surprised, and maybe it's because the, the way the slides cut I'm actually surprised by the lack of overall recoil on my hand and how snappy the front end is. One of the criticisms I have of the M17, which I have shot, is it, because it, it, it's mill spec, it has, it, it's snappy, and I see a lot of mu muzzle rise in the background of my vision. Yep. On this, it, I feel like it's back on target super fast, so my split time would be reduced yep. in a build drill or whatever. Shorter reset, everything. Shorter yeah. reset, yeah. Yep. Which is really what it's all about. Like, yeah. People talk grip doesn't matter for accuracy. It does, you want to put multiple rounds on target. Yes. And we have to be able to reset that trigger super fast. Yeah, for sure. Manage the recoil. Okay. Um, so now we do the same thing. Now yeah. we do it from the holster, so we get the burn. Got it. A rep from here, focus on driving it out. And now it's just a timing piece. That master grip, feeling that new grip angle. And now we're just reconfirming where our eyes are going. Yep. And I feel like a lot of guys, um, if they're not aware of it, their eyes will start to track down instead of staring right at the target. So they'll look down, the timer will go off, they'll grab it, and then their eyes will transition and they end up doing a bowling motion. Got it. Vice, if nothing else happens, if I were to attack you right now, but you have to shoot that, we keep eyes on target and we fight to drive to it. Got Our it. body doesn't know if we're 90 degrees, upside down. It shouldn't matter if we just stare where we want to go. Got it. So one solid presentation from the holster. Yep. Followed up with two shots. And we start burning that rep. Okay. To try to get that. So two rounds. Yep. One shot, reset. Yep. Okay. One shot, reholster. Now we're just burning reps from the holster. Okay. Yeah. Something else we started doing when we uh, when we reholster. Yeah. It's an old school thing from uh, the Sig 226. Decock, thumb, holster, and retain. Yeah. We end up thumb on the back plate just to make sure it doesn't get knocked out of battery. So every time we go to reholster, we go long on the index finger and we backplate it to make sure this thing's not knocked out of battery. Sometimes I didn't even have a, the only habit I teach my students as well as just enforcing myself is looking at the holster to give it a glance. Sure. Because it's like, guys are like, it sucks, you gotta look at your holster. I'm like, sucks you're a douche bag and you don't understand like, hey, you're probably coming off a high of stress and yeah. you're already checked out, there's no fight. Yeah. But the fact that you're giving me something to do, which is like follow through on the back end, that's so powerful, man. It's like, yeah, I, mean, I never even thought about that. Yeah, you know, like people are sitting here trying to reholster. Like, look down and reholster at one time and make sure this thing is Got it. in proper work. So, order. thumb on the back plate. We always push do. It down. Anytime we holster, we're going long yeah. finger. Yeah, because then it's like, that's like your admin check, knowing whatever you're putting away is good to go to pull out again, and it's good. And, and, and you know, the deal, you do it under the rest, and we get a little bit of a gap. It's out of battery. It's, it's of not battery. going. Yeah. That's so just one more confirmation. It's Got seated, it. it's set. I love we're that. Good. I love that. Just build the universal, just do it on every platform. I'm still in that too, guys. I'm still in that too. Yeah. Right. 
Cool. How's it feel? Dude, if, if I feel like I'm cheating with this gun, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hopped up. This ain't like a stock gun, but I feel like I could do some damage. I, I could at least be a marksman and, uh, and shooting a pistol. Yeah. Uh, it, it does feel good. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I'm used to like, like, like one of the issues I have, my support hand locks the slide catch on a lock because Same. we have big hands. Yeah. And so the, the CAG works piece that goes up and out of the way, Same I have me. to run that. Me too. But I don't have to do that on this. Yeah. And so our big hands can fit forward of the gun and support it all at once, and I'm not going to induce a malfunction, which is what I'm not used to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we talked about the unfair advantage. Like when you yeah. pull that thing out, your confidence yeah. should be through the roof. Like if I'm driving this thing out to take a shot, yeah. I should have every advantage possible. That yeah. gun should feel like it's an extension of my body because I'm about to ask it to do something that's outside of normal people's scope. Yeah. I'm about to ask this gun to do some next level stuff yeah. and it's got to be an extension. I love this, man. I love it. Okay, right. same thing? Yep, same thing. We'll, we'll finish off on that mag and then we'll do a, um, a step up to a build drill, okay. which we stole from you guys and became my favorite drill. How the magazine will fill for the reload. I feel like they just launched it in the ground like a lawn dart. If that was a Glock, it would have been like. <clears throat> exactly. In fact, when I was on active duty, we would, I would do this deliberately because all of the plastic mags we were using before steel or Magpul had good mags, they would bind. And that, so my, my, it's always doing this to get yep. shake the mag. But yeah. that thing launched out of there like it was. Yeah, you get the had, John Wick flick. You got to try yeah. to get it out of there. It's like it had uh, petting behind it. It's like yeah. launched out of there. No, it's perfect. All right. So I was down teaching the Air Force guys, and they started talking about the build drill. Yeah. They're kind of build up for it. And I love the progression. I'm all about the progression. Um, but they started off with one shot from the holster, seven meters, whatever it was. But it's on a three-second par time. Um, just Thank like you. the old build drill. It's six rounds into the A zone, seven meters, three seconds from the holster. Okay. But to get guys to burn max amount of reps, because if we, we cold bore right now, six rounds and you throw one out. Yeah. I don't want you to burn a bad rep. Yeah. So we start with one round on a three second part time. That way you feel it. There's no rush. <sighs> now two rounds, the same thing. And three, ramp it up. four, five. By the time you get to five, Got it. It's one of those things like if we bobble the draw, if we don't prep the trigger, we're right on that cusp where we're starting to chase rounds and you'll see bodies, uh, their body mechanics start to break down. We'll start to lean forward and we'll chase it. Yeah. Like we're not chasing. We've got to make it smooth the entire time. So we drop down one. If I miss it on my five shot, I drop back down to four. I redo four. Then we move to five. Then we move to six. We just keep elevating. Like there is no, there's no magic drill. You just yeah. have to keep hammering the basics. And I feel that build drills, that build up is perfect, especially for new shooters. Yeah. We have to work from the holster. We have to stay where we want to go. Grip, retention, everything comes into alignment. And I don't know about you, I've never shot at anybody one time. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna take multiple. Yeah. And six rounds, like six rounds is a very good number to be able to put on target inside yeah. of this range, super fast in three seconds from the holster. That's a realistic time. And it pushes the pace, like it makes you work for it. Yeah, I, the guys who, who uh, the two hole, two round thing, I think early in the GWAT in training, when I was in Safar Tech, when I was in different training courses, that was the thing. But more so, it was like, almost like ammo conservation, but Al Qaeda and smart bad guys have body armor. And, and if you're using two rounds as an interim, then you're assessing, you're spending a lot of time in assessment when you could just be giving them the rounds until you get the end result that you want. And uh, yeah, I, I like that. And I, I also like progression. Most people would shoot this, they'll shoot six and they'll go, ah, and they get frustrated. Then they'll do it, do it, do it, build up, build the confidence. And I, this is a Safari Land ALS, brand new. It does have a different position and everything is kind of different about it. So even for me, I need that workup. I don't need it. Like, I, I'm not so good that I can ever just go, let's just wing it, see what happens. I like the whole progressive so nature. You, in the progression, we get a brand new shooter on the line. If I ran him through 10 courses of fire with a standard build drill, that's 10 reps out of the holster. We do it the other way, he's getting 60 reps out of the holster. Like yeah. I'm making him work for it yeah. even more. It's like, that's the thing. There is no magic, there's only repetition. I love it. Make them work it. I love Make it. Make them work everything. All right, here we go. Cole, right. you got a timer? Yep. So just for reference, I'm not trying to press you with my shooting because I'm not a very good shooter. This is like three meters away. It's probably 10 feet away. Yeah. It's not far. It's not that far. 
Again, I'm not trying to impress. When I just want you to, I don't want you to get sucked into the target. That's why we're not overshoot uh, showing it. The the training protocol I'm missing is what's important right now. Okay. Yeah, the training methodology is really the focus. Yeah. It's hammering home the basics and the importance of the basics. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm super experienced, brand new shooter. Yeah. Everybody hammers the same thing. It's got to be the basics. It's yep. got to be repeatable. I love that. All right. So, uh, one shot off the timer, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Stand by. Get my hand on or off? So this want. is three seconds? Yep. So that was three seconds all yeah. the way through? You've got a massive amount of time. Yeah. You can go from the surrender position. Okay, I'll hands do neutral. It, Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. But uh, what I'd argue is stare exactly at the A. Yeah. A, a lot of guys, um, even the experience, I even do it. Sometimes I'll get, I'll start to feather from maybe mid thoracic and up my eyes will start to wander. And when I do, I start to throw them low. If I just target fix it exactly where I want it to go, Got it. I feel like that cleans up uh, the entire evolution. Yeah, I like that focus. All right. All right, cool. Stand by. Oh, I biffed it. Yeah. And then I tried to make it up. Yeah. And then I raced it. Yeah. Still yeah. got good accuracy. Still drove down the eye line. And yeah. how was the trigger prep on the out? Even with off. the bobble, still 1.85. Okay. 1.5. 1.2. 1.2. Oh! So, some things that we can kind of speed up uh, on this initial shot and reaction we talked about is as you're drawing, you're prepping that trigger. So once that sight's aligned, that, yeah. that shot's That's cracking. That's what's screwing me up. Because yep. I'm so throwing you can it notice and then that. snatching it. Yep, yep. Okay. you can notice that pause. So like, kind of clear and safe real quick. Good. So again, as you're coming up, I'm prepping that trigger. So as it comes sight up, I'm breaking that shot. I'm not going to lie. I didn't do it because I was scared. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm like is. prepping a trigger. Yeah, that's you're like prepping super, a trigger you don't know. Yeah, it's I'm the like, unknown. Uh, we haven't gone on a date yet. You, can, yeah. you seem kind of eager. Nope. Like, what, what, so what's going on here? So, okay, I'll do that. I got it. Oh, we're in a safe environment. Now's yeah. the time to push the limits. Got yeah. it. Good? Yep. So, hey, we'll do one more for a single shot. Yeah. So we'll do one more for a single, then we'll build into two and kind of just go through the whole evolution. All right. One, one. One, one. All right, let's go to two. Yep. You can give him a standby. Standby. So one one first shot, then 0.4 second, so 1.5. Sure. Stand by. One nine. Biff. So just for uh, for the diagnostic check for me, as you're doing this, I like to position myself on your center line to see if there's any kind of micro adjustments. Uh, you'll see a lot of guys, guys who are used to running in kit who have to defeat kind of pouches. They'll break body position just enough to kind of break it that little bit translates yeah. like if we move this thing back to 15 it's yeah. all the difference in the world i yeah. didn't realize it shooting with kid for that many years yeah just natural body mechanics. are you seeing me do that i haven't i haven't moved around to the side yeah i do it yeah just with shoulder stuff muscle memory yeah just a little bit of movement i'm like oh if i can just keep it natural and drive yeah. it out just a, a tenth of a second man a tenth yeah. of a second matters yeah for sure so yeah for the diagnostic just really head positioning and making sure we're not doing a big forward lean making sure everything is you know, a universal approach. So, two shots. Yep, back two shots. Yep, stand by. One six. Two shots again, stand by. Oh, I had a biff grip on that one. My grip was sideways. Yep. It, um, I'm noticing like my draw isn't confident because I'm used to snatching the clock out yep. so easily, but this is just feels a little bit different. Yep. Like my, my brain's going, that's not what it normally is. Yep. And so there's a hesitation yep. on my part. I, I feel yeah. it. Like it's trying to build that confidence. Like you have you know, thousands and thousands of reps yeah. of breaking shots with a Glock. Yeah. You just don't have it with a SIG. So yeah. you have to it's rebuild like that confidence. It's like being born again. It is, man. Like it's a, Sometimes it's a difficult transition. I think people, yeah. people underestimate too, like this is a time to notice what's working and not working with your holster draw. So yeah. these are so adjustable these days. It's like, do you cant it a little bit? Yeah. Do you have a shoulder issue? Yeah, for sure. Something I feel like up? I need to cant this way yep. slightly. That, I mean, that's how. That's why I have yeah, mine you're right, yeah. canted. 
So and I'm a, used to that can on a Glock. It's just because this is so upright. I'm noticing I have to lift up and out clear and then do this when I'm normally like A to B. Now I feel like I'm doing A, B, C. Yep. Huh. Okay, I love it though. It's Two, ah. three. three. Building three, three shots, shots now. The same thing. Stand by. One eight seven. One two. It's the first shot. Yep. Just prep, prep that trigger a little quicker. Yep. Three shots, stand by. Good follow through, mag reload still 4.4, 4. 4, but that first shot was like 1.1 1. 1 and that's moving. Yeah. Yeah. All right, stand by. One point six. Yep. So I take it to four shots. Yep. Okay. Let's take it to four. Get yeah, you progressing. Awesome. Stand by. One point seven. That one one and that good kind of uh, metronome kind of beat of you're consistently resetting that trigger. You're right at point two one, mm -hmm. and it's just even across. So. Uh, four shots. Four shots. You ready? Stand by. Yeah. Super clean. Clean. 1.1 1 .1 on that initial shot. 0.2. Yep. Uh, 1.7. We're also moved to Perfect. five. Yep. I'm right, going to five. Five shots. Stand by. One point nine. There we go. Let's go to six. Stand by. Okay. Anyone want one? All right, so now we're in dangerous territory here. Huh? So now we're in the sixth round thing. So we talk about the bobble. We talk about a, a missed grip. If we imagine that I only get that much of a, a strong purchase, by the time I get the full extension, it's not going to get better. So I feel the only way to make up for it is with my support hand. Yeah. I don't have time to readjust. Yeah. We have to make it go and we have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yep. It's not a perfect grip, but inside of this range, I don't have time to do a readjustment. Yeah. I've got to stare exactly where I want it to go. The spitball approach, I'm driving it out, I'm prepping it, I'm pulling it straight to the rear, as confident as I can, trying to manage what I can yeah. with what I have. It's weird. So, I, I feel pressure, man. I, I yeah. like. I feel stress. Yeah. It's a new gun. I got two dev dudes coaching me. Like I, I like, but I feel it's like I'm in that magic window of performance stress. Like I feel like it's an advantage right now. It's, yeah. it's not overwhelming, but I rarely feel this. I, I I only feel it when I run my students through a stress shoot, and then I run it blind yeah. on my own. <laughs> but I, but I like that. It, it yeah. feels good, man. It's like positive energy. One of the quotes that uh, stuck with me over the career is one of the old guys. He said, "You fight in the condition you're in." If you have a hip surgery, you get attacked in the street, you fight in the condition you're in. You pull out that pistol with a shitty master grip, yeah. you're fighting the condition you're in. Yeah. So whatever it is at full presentation, yeah. you're fighting in that. So yeah. comfortable I feel like that was DJ's uh, nice way of telling me my grip sucks, no. but just get used to fighting uh, with, with the loss of, of, the, of the state. No, I mean like, so what I see a lot of times is guys will start the drill, they'll have a shitty grip and they'll want to readjust like, ah, I'll just do it again. Finish the drill. Finish it. That's why I love you keep running it. Yeah. Like, Two rounds, I've still got to do another four, reload, I still finish the drill. Yeah. Still burn a positive rep, we're still staring right at it. Yeah. We're working in the workspace. Yeah. It's one more opportunity to burn a good rep. Yeah. You can't ever have enough. I love this, man. All right. All right, finish All right six up. rounds. Six shots. Cool. Six shots from the holster. Stand by. Yeah. Woo! 2.03. Yeah. You were, you were right under uh, .2 in between. Moving. Good yeah. good trigger reset. Yep. Under a 1.1 on his first shot. Ooh. Yeah, that's moving. Good, man. All right. Six. Yep. Stand, Stand by. by. 1.9. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, when you think about this in mindset, like the confidence builder that you can hammer out six rounds under two seconds in distress because yeah. we're making you nervous and the timer is, it's just natural. We're, yeah, all your rounds are inside of a fifth. Yeah. Yeah.
Like, wow. We, so we talk about just staring where I want it to go. I mean, we've all seen it. If I shoot you there or there, it's not like you're going to send me a report like, oh, you dick. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's the confidence to be able to drive that thing out under duress inside of a fist size space, inside of a, a realistic engagement. Yeah. I like that. Pre- I mean, I, uh, I feel like I'm all, like I just offboarded a little bird onto a target. It's, it's, uh, it's very beneficial stress. And I, what I find fascinating about your, your tactics, because I'm critical of instructors and trainers, not critical, but like inquisitive, but also like how, how, how are you working is it's a progress. It's a, it, we're stacking chips. And, and a lot of guys I see, um, they train dudes and they don't start, like this is how you master everything. It's like, it's like, hey, let's do it in slow motion. Let's, let's work through each and every step and then culminate bringing the stuff together. And I, I feel like not a lot of guys do that, right? Because you pay, you pay money for the course and, they're, and they're, you're literally paying for somebody to give you the drill to shoot papers through holes versus the, the attention to detail and like this progressive tactic. And again, I'm, I'm not saying this to like impress upon you like this is some sexy ninja stuff, but it kind of is. It's like the best chefs in the world have the knack for flavor and for taste, but also science of how the things work, how do the ingredients work together. And when you do that and you see it, it's like, that's not impressive, but it's, it's so simple. That's why it doesn't seem impressive, but when you put it together, it's like so impressive. So one of the things we talk about is everybody wants to, they want to engage in knowledge transfer. They want to be able to teach somebody else a skill set. So that's why we hammer home so hard on the why. Because yeah. I know you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. I know you're going to go back and try to regurgitate everything you just heard. I'm going to give it to you in such a manner that you're forced to fully take it on. You're going to polish it, make it your own little thing. Yeah. And then you're going to transfer that formula over to somebody else. It's like, if it makes sense, proof is in a pudding. Can you do it under duress? Yeah. There's no magic sauce. There's only perfect reputation. I love just it. Just burn man. it, man. Yeah, I'm going to start GBRS with the G stands for Glover. Yeah. And it's going to be a tactical <laughs> company of nothing but Navy guys and one Army guy. That's yeah. what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, guys, I appreciate you guys coming out and teaching me. Um, I'm excited about uh, working together with you guys, um, highlighting a lot of your expertise. We are talking about it in the podcast, and we had talked about you guys positioning your expertise to train Mill and LEO. But what I find interesting is that the content you're providing in this format right now and the stuff you do on Instagram and, and YouTube, that's training and processes and methodology that any civilian could take and apply to their game, yeah. which I think is epic, man. I'm trying to give the universal approach. Yeah. Something that it might not be one size fits all, but the concept behind it, it only makes sense. Like, yeah. Make it the same. Make it repeatable. Do it with intent and understand why you do everything. If you understand the why, you can write your own style. Yeah. Like, that's the beautiful thing. It's like you have to believe in your style. A hundred percent. That's why when people, uh, these trolls on the internet, they talk shit about certain coaches. That dude's background and pedigree, that dude bet his entire career on his skill set and his SOPs and his methodology and everything he does. There's nothing wrong with that. That dude is an American fucking hero. He is. Like, give him the respect he deserves. Like, that dude bets his life on, on his method, on his style. And I love it. I yeah. love the training methodology and I love learning from other people. Yeah. I'm right here. He's talking about me. He was yeah. talking about me just now. I'm like, I'm right here, man. You, yeah. you talked to me about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, I had a lot of, I had a good time. I had the pressure. Uh, what I'm going to do with these guys right now is we're going to do black rifle coffee pro tip content because these guys got something to offer and I want to do our best and, and presenting that. Like I told you guys before, uh, field craft, I'm not a subject matter expert. My field of experience that's mostly reconnaissance and sniper based operations is very narrow. So I don't want field craft to be the expert. I want field craft to be the conduit for the expertise. These guys are the experts and I hope you found value uh, in their expertise. Uh, Till next time. Thanks guys. Cole, DJ, yeah, appreciate well, you. you guys. Uh, make sure you see all the links below, subscribe, all that good stuff um, and check out their social media platforms below. Subscribe to them as well so you could continue to learn in your journey. Until next time, peace out. Thanks, guys.